As you may have guessed with my questions about streamers, I am myself a gamer, and so watching Sean Levy and Ryan Reynolds have a crack at another video games movie. Now, Sean Levy didn't direct Detective Pikachu, but Ryan Reynolds has had a go at it before. I was ready to be very, well, actually, and then push my glasses up my nose. And honestly, I just enjoyed myself. So there. Now, I need to flag up, again, that there is a lot of Ryan Reynolds out there right now. As mentioned just seconds ago, Crude's 2, It's Man's Wife's film title, film title, all of his YouTube videos. He's got these different companies. He's selling this, he's selling that. He's around a lot. But he is so very charming and he truly believes in these projects. And you can tell he is pouring his heart and all of his mind into the details that are in this movie and into any project. He's just particular. And if you don't like his shtick, then genuinely step away. This isn't going to make you change your mind. I, I do bring it up in passing in the interview. This movie, whilst being an original IP, does lean on lots of other different ideas. It's a mix of Elf, The Matrix-ish, The Truman Show... Reynolds is essentially Emmett from the Lego movie, more or less. Um, he's got a blue shirt, he wakes up, he's got a big bright smile on his face, he's ready to sing and have some overpriced coffee, and everything is awesome. Let's get down to work. Until, until he starts to break his code and realise that everything is not necessarily awesome. The bright-eyed pressed shirt thing doesn't always work, as Reynolds can't sometimes resist one-liners that don't really fit the character. Like, you kind of want the joke and it doesn't really fit what he should be saying but all in all it's sweet it's knowing all ryan reynolds projects do feel very self-aware though this is not up there on deadpool levels it's charming and it's got enjoyable want to tell your friends about them straight away cameos as well as a few conceit riffing set pieces and then there's the cast which i'll go on about at length it feels like uh, you've got fellow green lantern survivor and now oscar winning writer director taika watiti as the big evil boss man Antoine, wearing terrible clothes and spitting out humiliating techno babble to his peons. I wonder though if a little bit more editing or maybe scripting would have made his gags land a touch better, but hey. Then there's Jodie Comer in a dual role, showing off her impeccable accent work as ever, as both Millie in the real world, someone who's trying to prove that she's had her work stolen by Waititi's Antoine, as well as her leather trousers, baking tray, chest plate, ill-fitting shirt, odd glasses, in-game avatar called Molotov Girl. It's perfect if you're a gamer. You recognise it as a moment when you've added all these articles of clothing to your avatar because each item has great stats, but together it looks very lame. She's perfectly cool. The MPV of the movie, for sure, without a doubt, and a great sardonic foil to Reynolds' walking smiley face emoji character. You've got Stranger Things' is Joe Keery. There's little Ray Howery as Guy's in-game best friend. A couple of issues there with that character in the cliché department, but you have to presume they're playing with that idea, and a few more names. But at this point, I should just slow down a bit. Ryan would disagree, but I would like him, the movie, to have taken aim more directly at the likes of Fortnite, Grand Theft Auto Online, Call of Duty, etc, etc. Instead of this vague non-copyright infringing illusions, but I do understand why, as he states, this is a film that wants to be about love and freedom and doing what makes you happy. No shocker there, hey, Hollywood summer blockbuster, and it isn't looking to dunk on anyone directly, but still, that's how I'd have done it for what it's worth, even though, yes, gaming is not mainstream. And of course, we do have Wreck-It Ralph in the background that's done the whole, oh look, it's Sonic thing. It's a special effects filled summer blockbuster. It would be called Hokum by my dad, but it's also endearing, big hearted and very watchable. It's like any Assassin's Creed release you'd care to recall. I'd have loved fewer scenes set in the real world and more in the game called Free City, hence Free Guy. I still don't quite feel the name. But this is an efficiently entertaining 99 flake of a film, a summery, smiley sci-fi adventure that wants to put a grin in your face and probably will.